Hello, this is Dr. Gay from First Look MRI. And this is an example of a tear of the labrum. So this patient is 65. She has shoulder pain for years. She has some tendinopathy of her rotator cuff that explains some pain, but she also has a tear of the back of the labrum. So to get some anatomy, this is the round humeral head. This is the front, back, here's the outside. And the round humeral head rotates in this cup here. This is called the glenoid. This is the glenoid articular surface. And around the rim of the glenoid is a little black wedge. This is the front of the wedge. Here's the back of the wedge. And the wedge is the labrum. It's a little fibrocartilaginous band. And it sits around the rim of the cup. And it helps the humeral head sit low and deep within there. Imagine if it wasn't there, it would just be flat and the humeral head could move around. But this makes the joint stable by uh, lifting it up around the rim and letting it sit deep inside there. So. The labrum looks perfect on this view, but if we're gonna, if we go, let's see, up, up, we see a little band of brightness here. So this bright area is fluid, and there's a little horizontal band, and the horizontal band is between this black line, which is the cortex of the glenoid, the scapula here, is the black line is the cortex, and this other little black thing is the labrum, and that fluid is going right underneath the labrum and tracking posteriorly here. You can see it go all the way back over here to this area we call the spinal glenoid notch. So this patient has a tear through the base of the posterior labrum right at the periosteal attachment. The labrum is slightly uplifted there and the fluid is weeping out of that and going posteriorly here. So that is it, a tear of the posterior labrum. This will cause uh, shoulder pain and maybe even some instability and it may contribute to her uh, rotator cuff pain as well. And that's it, thank you very much.